Meet the Candidate series. The Arc of Pennsylvania hosted an interview of Joshua Siegel, candidate for Lehigh County's 22nd House District by Sarah Taglang, self-advocate. The Meet the Candidate series is an opportunity for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families to hear from candidates on disability issues. Candidates from all parties have been invited to participate. The Arc of Pennsylvania is a nonpartisan organization and does not endorse political candidates. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Meet the Candidate of uh, with the Arc of Pennsylvania. And with us today, we are happy to introduce everyone to Josh Siegel. Josh is the Democrat candidate running for the Pennsylvania House 22nd District of Lehigh County. He is running in the newly reformed 22nd House District following the redistricting process. Elected as the youngest ever member of the Allentown City Council, Josh works to ensure that city government works for the people that live there. Some of his key issues are education, affordable housing, banning gifts for all elected officials, a livable wage, and reproductive rights. So welcome, Josh. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. Great. So if you're not familiar with the Arc of Pennsylvania, we are the state's oldest, largest advocacy organization for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. What uh, makes us so strong is that we have amazing chapters, 30 chapters across the state that represent individual counties and sections of the state. Uh, where they also advocate and provide services for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their family. Uh, today, uh, we have um, the Arc of Lehigh Northampton, one of our premier chapters. They are amazing. They do great work in the Valley. So I would like to introduce you to Karen Shoemaker. She is their CEO, and she's going to tell you a little bit about the Arc of Lehigh Northampton. Thank you, Sherry. And thank you, Josh, for joining us this morning. We really uh, we love having these opportunities to connect with our legislators and um, potential candidates. So we're, we're eager to, to give you some background about us. Um, we Our chapter has been in the Valley since 1967. So we're actually celebrating our 55th anniversary this year. Um, as Sherry said, you know, we're one of 30 chapters in Pennsylvania and 600 in the across the country. Um, and our chapter does a, a mix of um, advocacy is the cornerstone of everything that we do. So we do advocacy for um, both youth and adults, a lot of special education advocacy surrounding um, students who have disabilities who may be having issues within their school districts uh, related to um, inclusive education. And then we also provide direct services. So we, we have an uh, adult treatment facility um, that do, does both community-based services as well as um, some services within the building here in, in Bethlehem. We're right off of Airport Road on Avenue A. Um, and then we also have a very large agency with Choice Program, um, which we are the only provider of that service in Lehigh and Northampton counties. Um, and that service allows families who have uh, a member with a disability, um, they're able to hire the person of their choice to provide services for their family member. And then the ARC provides all of the um, administrative um, services for onboarding, HR related services, and then um, things like payroll to pay the individual. So they're actually an employee of the ARC, but the they have a, a family member or other um, interested uh, party who is the managing employer and sets their wages and decides what services that person um, receives. So we're, 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 again, very happy to have you um, on this call with us. Thanks, Karen. And Josh, like I said before, the Arc of Lehigh Northampton is um, uh, just a, a premier chapter of the Arc of Pennsylvania. And we always welcome all the candidates to reach out to their local chapters uh, for any type of support that you need. So next up, I'm gonna introduce Sarah Taglang. So 
Thera works for the ARC of Pennsylvania. She's our administrative assistant. She is a graduate of the uh, Millersville University post-secondary program, as well as the Penn State Career Studies program, or I think I have that wrong. I think it's Millersville Career Studies and uh, the Penn State program, Penn State Harrisburg. Uh, I met Sarah when she was a student there and uh, she is a great asset to the ARC of Pennsylvania. Sarah will be asking the questions today. So I'm gonna go off camera and Sarah, I'm gonna give it to you. Okay. Josh, what, how will you advocate for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families who are on waiting list for their community service? Well, I mean, first and foremost, my goal is to make sure that as a state that we have sufficient spending and that we invest sufficient resources in making sure that there, uh, you know, that, that there are support personnel, uh, whether it be direct care personnel um, or, or, you know, mental health or social services available. I think as a state, the most important thing we can do is commit additional resources to make sure that families aren't in waiting, that they can get the assistance and support they need immediately. Um, I'm a big believer in creating a society that's founded on empathy and compassion uh, and making sure that everybody gets the tools that they need to succeed. So I think first and foremost, really, it's just a resource question and it's a matter of values as a state in terms of what we care about. Um, and I think taking care of uh, you know, our most vulnerable or, or, or those who need you know, additional services is one of the most important things that the state of Pennsylvania can do. Uh, to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to live a fulfilled and, with, and enriched life. Um, so that's that's where I come at it from. Josh, what investment to explain long-term service and support in, in community for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities will you advocate for? Well, you know, so one of the things I'm, I'm very proud to also have the endorsement of SEIU, the Service Employees International Union. And one of my big concerns here in the state of Pennsylvania really is uh, the the difficulty that we have in attracting and keeping people employed in the direct service and direct support field. Uh, I think direct direct support workers are, are woefully undercompensated for the work that they do. Uh, one of the things that we often talk about and I talked about with SEIU was that if the people that take care of us can't take care of themselves, um, there's no way that they can continue to provide support for, for families. And so I think the most important thing is to make sure that we have a robust, well-compensated, well-trained workforce of direct care professionals that can ensure that people have long-term support so that they can stay in their homes, stay with their families. Um, I know a lot of people, especially, you know, people that are caring for children or adults with intellectual disabilities are older folks. It's a lot of times it's parents or grandparents. And I think it's important that in the long run, we make sure that there are is a really a reliable and, and large field of direct care personnel uh, that can provide that assistance on a daily basis. Um, you know, those are the individuals that help provide social skills, social support, uh, and just day-to-day, -day, you know, assistance. Uh, and I want to make sure that as a state, we're investing in our direct care personnel so that they get a living wage uh, so that there's not a, a, a gap or absent or really just altogether paucity of those workers, uh, which is going to put more strain on families, especially as people age and they themselves can no longer kind of serve as a caregiver. Josh, will you support the closure of Pennsylvania's four remaining state centers? Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, the idea of confining people to a, you know, a single facility is an archaic model of caring for people. Um, I think the best thing for, for individuals is to be in a home, uh, you know, uh, you know their, their, their own home or with a loved one where they can get the support that they need um, and not isolate people from society. Um, you know, the reality is that people can live a, a rich and fulfilled life. Uh, you know, I think the most important thing is to treat people with intellectual disabilities with respect and dignity. Uh, and realize that we don't have to cordon them off from society, that you know, we shouldn't be isolating them and locking them off in a facility which can be frightening or terrifying or altogether just, you know, you know uh, the isolation itself is a problem. Um, you know, the modern way and then the, the, the proper way to do it is to make sure that people are supported in their homes, in their community, um, where they're integrated, where they, you know, they can hold employment, they can, you know, participate in society, they can be welcomed by the community and treated just like anybody else. Josh, how long do you work to address the how will you work to address the shortage of direct support? Well, I, I, I think I addressed that earlier and I just to reiterate, um, you know, our, our direct care professionals are, are poorly paid. They're, 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 they don't have uh, the same rights to collective bargaining as other fields do. And so they very, you know, they very rarely get access to these sort of wages, healthcare benefits um, and support that they need. Uh, you know, many direct care professionals are struggling to survive themselves. You know, they, they yeah, they, they struggle to take care of themselves. So 
as a state, I want to work to make sure that, you know, we, we have a living wage that we raise the wage for our direct care professionals to, you know, $15 an hour or more. Uh, you know, I think they should be making upwards of 20 to $25 an hour, to be honest. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a very, you know, difficult and, 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 uh, you know, it's a, it's a labor intensive field. Um, but if we want to attract good people and, uh, and, and attract people that are going to be committed for the long run, uh, we certainly don't want to see, you know, a lot of turnover. I mean, people become very connected and attached to their direct care professionals. And I don't want to see a field where they're churning out constantly or they're, you know, they're only there for a few years. I think it's important that those lifelong relationships, those bonds are built and that we have, you know, a, a field that people actively want to serve in. Josh, what action will you take to asset in reducing the risk of crime committed against people with intellectual and developmental disabilities? Well, I think we should have, you know, extraordinarily strong and tough penalties for discrimination or or, uh, or any form of, um, you know, abuse or harassment. Um, I'm a big believer in making sure that, you know, as a society, we protect our most vulnerable um, and that the people that would, you know, hurt or harm them face stiff penalties, you know, and, and, and are sufficiently punished. Um, I want to make sure, especially from a discrimination standpoint, um, that everybody is treated with the same degree of dignity and respect, uh, you know, regardless of, you know, their, 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 their personhood or their status or who they are. Um, and I think that as a state, we should be made, you know, we should have tough penalties for people that commit acts of discrimination against anybody. Um, and obviously including people with intellectual disabilities or physical disabilities. How will you work to ensure that the education system in Pennsylvania meets the needs of all children, especially those with intellectual and developmental disabilities? Well, one of the things I believe in passionately is universal pre-K education and universal child care. I think those are two things that the state of Pennsylvania that we need to offer to all families, uh, you know, regardless of, of, of income status. Um, I think pre-K education, early childhood education is an important investment. 95% you know, of a child's brain is developed before they're three. So making sure that all kids get that early support service, but specifically kids, you know, with intellectual disabilities, that they get that early support service, that they get the additional resources that they need. I think early childhood education is important to make sure that everybody gets you know, started off on the right foot um, and that they enter public, you know, when they eventually get to, you know, traditional public education, um, that they have the support services they need. They're not starting at a deficit or they're not starting from behind. Um, so I, I'm a big believer that the state should provide universal pre-K to every child as well as universal child care um, to make sure that every kid is getting the support services that they need. Um, I think across the board, universal pre-K is the right thing to do. But I think for kids that are facing particular barriers, whether it be racial, socioeconomic, or in this case, you know, uh, you, you know, the barriers associated with having intellectual disability, it's important that they have those support services to make sure that they can succeed in school and, 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 and do well and, and go on to live a rich and fulfilling life. Josh, what way will you promote the meaningful employment opportunities in your district for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities? Well, oh, I want to make sure that, again, we have strong anti-discrimination laws. I want to make sure that businesses, uh, you know, are, are actively recruiting and, and, and training, you know, individuals to, with intellectual disabilities to work at, you know, their places of employment. I think the most important thing is, again, making sure that anti-discrimination laws are in place so that everybody gets a fair shot um, and, and everybody can, you know, gets a chance to work and, and support themselves. Um, I think that that's the most important thing. And I'll be an outspoken advocate for that. I mean, my goal is to champion the idea of equal opportunity, equal employment for everybody. Um, you know, I think everyone has a right to, to earn a wage and support themselves and everyone has a right to sort of choose their own destiny and, 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 and work the job that they want to work. Um, and, you know, we should not, we should not put up artificial barriers or, or, nor should we discriminate against somebody's ability to do a job. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. The Meet the Candidate series is an opportunity for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families to hear from candidates on disability issues. Candidates from all parties have been invited to participate. The ARC of Pennsylvania is a nonpartisan organization and does not endorse political candidates.